Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be doing my updated ratings for the Battleground States in 2024. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. And so pretty much guys, we see all of these states that are already filled out in solid red. The only classification left is a lean margin. This is simply just for battleground purposes, not necessarily for a major prediction, just to kind of see where I think the general idea of the election is going. Everything that is left blank was uh, decided by under 10 points in my average simulation model. So essentially, I basically got the results of minus 20 popular vote in the RCP aggregate. So I have an election model where I can basically plug it in the RCP aggregate and it spits me back a number. And so I basically did the half percentage for all the way from negative 20 all the way to positive 20, which was an electoral college landslide. Even Connecticut was competitive and Delaware was flipping. Colorado was like a five point win. Illinois was lean R. Even Maine's first was flipping Republican in that scenario. And Maryland was almost under 10. So it would have been pretty bad. Even Rhode Island and Oregon were flipping. Washington was flipping. Wisconsin was like R plus 20. And you see here in this scenario that we get average results, which kind of gives us an idea of where the states can go in 2024. And so we're going to be filling these out west to east. So Oregon is the first one. I'm putting it in the lean classification as of right now. The state of Oregon is interesting because President Biden won it by 16 percentage points. But polling has it under 15 points. And based on my model and trends across the nation, my actual projection as of right now has the state of Oregon as a six point victory for the incumbent president which would be about 10 points lower than what it was before and we see on average every single state roughly is shifting about 10 points to the right or so that's kind of what we're seeing nationwide because of the fact that we do see an r plus seven national environment a seven and a half national environment for the former president that's what we are getting because donald trump's support in the three-way aggregate on rcp has definitely ticked up it went from basically went up a whole point it went from like 1.8 to 2.9 in like a two days so that is a huge shift there so that is basically causing that really big shift in the state and we see you know arizona is almost approaching 10 points and we see polls in arizona as of recent that have arizona up like eight or nine points in colorado it's a three and a half point victory for biden illinois is competitive Maine at large is somewhat competitive it still goes to biden uh, new mexico is actually a pretty easy victory for the former president believe it or not but we're going to continue this colorado will be in that lean column you know in the simulation model it is above a five point category as well as the state of illinois including new jersey and delaware essentially what this means is that all of these states even though they could be under five my general expectation is that they're going to go to president biden or at least that biden leans in the those states that they are leaning towards the incumbent president now for the republican states we have wisconsin michigan pennsylvania georgia arizona nevada which essentially means that donald trump is essentially favored to win all of these states and yes they are all over five point victories in my model arizona and this simulation is 7.7 .7. illinois or georgia's 8.8 .8. Michigan 6.4, we see New Mexico is lean, Pennsylvania 7.8, and Wisconsin 8 points. So we see those states are in that category, which essentially leaves New Mexico, Minnesota, Virginia, New Hampshire, Maine at large, and Nebraska second as the main toss-ups for the election. Notice New York is not in this category because the simulation results do have it over 10 points if it was not over 10 points i would have it under the classification washington is also under 10 points in the average simulation model so they are not in the lean category but that effectively leaves you know the states you know that are you're going to see now that are essentially left in yellow in the toss of category for either party i expect the former president to get 312 electoral votes on election day this includes the 
the facts with Biden being very unpopular, major economic issues are going on. The president has kind of maintained his approval rating. And so if I had to basically create a battleground projection map, I would essentially have Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada going to the former president very easily, leaving New Mexico, Minnesota, Virginia, New Hampshire, Maine out large, and Nebraska second, kind of up in the air. And even states like Nebraska are kind of already basically leaning Republican essentially because it is a 4.9 percentage point victory in my forecast and so even the state of new mexico is around like a 2.9 percentage point winner is at least like 2.1 so it is somewhat competitive uh but it is kind of already leaning in that column main at large does in fact lean to the former to the incumbent president that is the only toss-up state that biden is like overwhelmingly favored in including nebraska second so you could say this is more of an expanded battleground map per se but that is kind of the consensus. I do expect the states in lean blue to go to Biden and all the states that are in red, I expect to go to Trump. And essentially, we have the toss up states here, which are all states Trump wants to target. And people are thinking that he's crazy for going out there and trying to do that. But the thing with President Biden is you got to understand right now, neither candidate really has the incumbency advantage. They are both, you know, incumbent slash former president. So you can play around with the electoral map a little bit more because it's not like Trump was a brand new candidate last time and lost and then got the nomination again and now has to kind of work his way up. That's not how this works. Now it's kind of like neither of them have the incumbency factor since Trump is kind of benefiting from the harsh comparison between the two candidates. That's why you're seeing such a huge advantage for Trump in the polls compared to last time. Because the thing is, guys, right now, the thing with this is that everybody has the conventional wisdom of, oh, it's going to be a close race. We can't really say one side's going to win in a landslide, you know, whatever. But the one thing that really breaks that rule is the fact that it's Trump running against Biden. Literally, if you look at all my other projections, I did a video where I essentially go over what would have happened if all the other Republican candidates would have ran against Biden. Vivek gets 313. He wins Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. But they would have been considered toss-ups. They were lean margins. Like, he would have won them impressively, you know, compared to Trump. Like, if he would have been the nominee and he would have won them lean R, everyone would have been like, whoa, that's pretty impressive. We should have definitely gotten him before. But it's not really that. Trump would have done far better. But if you look at, like, uh, Mike Pence, he would have gotten 286. That's how unpopular Biden is. He would have legit gotten Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Nevada, and he would have won. Ron DeSantis would have gotten Nevada, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and call it a day. He wouldn't have gotten Georgia because... His African-American support base is not exactly where it needs to be. And he actually would have lost it by about a point. Like, it would have been bad. And, you know, the suburbs with the whole abortion thing would have definitely affected him. And then pretty much Nikki Haley and Chris Christie would have lost big time. So, really, Donald Trump is the only candidate that can kind of go out there and be like, okay, I can compare my record and basically completely wipe away Biden's incumbency advantage. He really doesn't even have one. If anything, that actually hurts him this cycle because everyone's like, oh, he's the president and he's done nothing. He literally has nothing to kind of weigh on his incumbency for. And so that's why you're seeing the polls look like this. And the model is picking up that there is going to be a significant polling error because when you compare previous results, when you compare the trends and the swings in each state, it knows, okay, well, if the popular vote you know, RCP aggregate is going to be plus three, then Donald Trump should be doing far better in these states. Biden would have to essentially be leading the aggregate by about nine points and be up on Trump 10 points in favorability. So essentially, that means that Trump would basically have to crater to the low 30s and Biden would kind of have to hover around, you know, 40 something percent could be leading the aggregate by almost 10 to barely beat Trump on election day with 271 electoral votes. So Biden's chances of winning are actually really slim. My simulation model actually only has him winning 17 out of the out of the 80 times that this has been ran. Literally out of the 80 times, he only wins like 16 of them or something like that so he has like a 17.5 percentage point chance of winning the election and if you really look at the electoral map it makes sense why he has a 17 percent chance to win the election because a lot of people are going to be like wait really why would he only have a 17 percent chance that seems unrealistic well doesn't trump have a way slimmer chance than that well 
The problem is, is that Trump is polling outside the margin of error. He's technically polling outside the margin margin of error in Maine at large, by the way. But for the sake of the video, let's put it there. Uh, New Hampshire, Biden still polling out of that. And Nebraska second is within. So these are all of the states that are essentially polling within the margin of error, essentially, which is Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Nebraska second, right? So Nevada, Arizona, Georgia are already above 3.5 percentage point victories, which is the standard deviation margin of error with electoral politics. And so you could say Trump's already got those. And so Biden literally has to win every single swing state in order to get 270 electoral votes. That's why his chance of winning is actually so low, because he literally has to have a perfect night, Not because Trump before... Everyone was like, well, he has to have a perfect night. Everyone, he's got to go out there. You know, oh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, forget it. They're already Biden's no matter what. Nevada was Biden's. Florida was Biden's. Everyone was like, oh, you got to win Iowa and Ohio. You got to win Georgia. You got to win North Carolina. You got to win Texas, Arizona. Oh, my God, his path to victory is just so steep. There's no possible way that Trump is going to be able to make up the ground he's going to need to make up in order to basically beat biden that's what that, that was the consensus that oh there's no way he's going to be able to pull it off but at the end of the day he essentially did because really trump just ran the score here you know got florida like he was supposed to and then got over here he was basically down my actual election prediction was about this this is pr pretty much what i had I had him winning Nevada, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, but not Arizona and Georgia. I didn't really understand the suburban and African-American swings. If I had known about those, I probably would have been able to predict this correctly um, last time. And I didn't understand about Nebraska second either. I thought, oh, Nebraska's red. That means all the districts are going to go red. I didn't really understand that. So all the states in yellow were, is what I basically got wrong last time, which I say for me being 16, not knowing anything about electoral politics is pretty impressive. But just to get back on track, literally, Donald Trump has to really just hold what he has in the polls. If he just holds what he's winning over three and a half points in the polls, he's basically got the election. He could even win Nebraska second out of nowhere, which is not a guarantee for Biden because they redo the district to be more Republican. So Trump could very well flip it back narrowly. And at that point, if he flips that back, Trump ties him and doesn't even need 270. I mean, it would be more comfortable to get a state or two, which presumably would be Wisconsin and Nevada, or Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, like that would be a little bit more comforting. But here they would send it to the House of Representatives and he'd probably win through the House legislature and probably become the president there. So there's really, you know, Biden needs a perfect night in order to win. And on top of that, he needs to win a district in a red state that was redrawn to be way more red. So literally he needs to run the table in every single swing state that is polling within the margin of error. And all, most of these states, Trump's ahead in. He's ahead in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Biden's ahead in Minnesota, Nebraska, second in Virginia. But he is only ahead in Virginia, Minnesota by tilt margin. So that just goes to show why his path to victory is actually slow, slim. Right now, my current forecast you know, based on my election model, has Donald Trump getting 345 electoral college votes? He wins the popular vote by seven and a half, and he's winning states like Wisconsin by 10. He wins Virginia by 1.8, Pennsylvania by basically 10, winning North Carolina by 13, winning Nevada by 11.8. He wins Michigan by 8.5, winning Maine second by basically a safe margin. Even Maine's first is actually a likely district now. So that is actually very interesting. Georgia is a basically over 10 points florida 17 point margin colorado is under a couple points so you are seeing a little bit of a of regression there for joe biden this is my current forecast but essentially in terms of the swing states this is what you have you have donald trump essentially already at 312 electoral college votes and biden's kind of out there having to defend certain blue states which is not going to be a great look for him on election day as of right now and so if you guys did enjoy this analysis of the battleground states please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want more content just like this and i hope to see you guys in the next video